Ladies and gentlemen, Microsoft's Windows 11 unveiling event has just finished, and there is an absolute metric ton to go over here. Now, I want to make this very clear. This is, you know, really early days in this announcement. So I'm going to run you through the things that stood out to me through the course of this announcement. And of course, I'm going to miss things. Things are going to be clarified. Answers will be there that I'm not going to be able to give you in this video. But I wanted to really quickly run through some of the big hallmark things, the big things that I think were super, super interesting uh, from this announcement. Before we go too much further, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, please do consider hitting that subscribe button or ringing that bell to get updates on my future content. Thanks. So first and foremost, it is Windows 11. I know there is some controversy there early on where Windows said it's Windows 10 forever. You know, that's going to be a, a, a service going forward, so to speak. Well, they lied. It is Windows 11. So let's get that out of the way first and foremost. And we've got an image here to kind of show you, you know, picture in picture a little bit here, what they did show off. It is Windows 11. Now, they also talked about improved multi-monitor support. As a dual monitor user, I am super happy about this. They showed things like plugging in a laptop and it pulling up, you know, the two desktops they had there set up exactly as they were before. So the two apps they had open, boom, when it popped up, there they were again. That is a really, really cool thing to be able to have. In particular, if you're the kind of person that's on the go, plugging in a monitor, unplugging and taking your laptop with you, this is really cool. So next up, they talked about the fact that Windows 11 is more lightweight than Windows 10. Uh, Windows updates are going to run in the background. They're gonna be 40% smaller. So just lots of optimizations all around, improved battery life because of this uh, optimization as well. They showed off the new snapping layout, you know, where you can take a window and drag it to one side and, and then it'll give you this little menu. Well, now you can actually click on the square here and get a menu of different size snap layouts, which I think are actually really, really cool. I particularly like this one. I love the idea of having like, Twitter, a Twitter feed here, and then your web browser there. And we're gonna talk about how well that might work in the future using you know, the actual Android Twitter app, which I'm super stoked about. Then they showed off something called Snap Groups, which is something that we have essentially on the Surface Duo, where you can group two apps together so that when you launch them, you get both apps launching on both screens. Well, now you can do this with Snapping Groups. So you click on that group and you get you know the apps that you have grouped together in the Snap layout that you prefer them to be in. This is a really, really neat feature as well. They also talked about some improvements to virtual desktops, you know, multiple different desktops with different backgrounds, different layouts. They spent a lot of time talking about Teams integration into Windows. Teams is gonna be apparently deeply built into Windows. They're betting big on Teams that if it's there and it's easy to use and it looks nice, you're gonna be more likely to use it. We'll see how that pans out. To me, I wonder, you know, in a parallel universe where this Discord deal went through, would this have been Discord in this place or would they've always bet this big on Teams? Then we got to look at something they're calling Windows Widgets, which is a set of widgets for Windows. You can customize them, you can drag them around. There's a news feed as well. You can actually drag this out and make it full screen so you get these widgets on one side and then a news feed sort of on the other. This is some cool stuff. This is stuff that they've kind of pulled from Android to some degree. I am curious to see if the news feed defaults to Edge browser or rather I should say if it will let you use any other browser besides Edge because that would be kind of a deal breaker for me as I am using Brave again right now, but I'm happy to see widgets properly in Windows. They also showed some improvements to using Windows without a keyboard, like on this Surface Pro X. When you disconnected the keyboard, the icons down here spread out a bit to make them easier to touch and generalized touch targets just got bigger, got easier to use. He also talked about different gestures on screen being much improved. So your trackpad gestures, like three finger swipe to bring up your desktop or whatever it may be, that will just be translated to your touch screen now. So and, you know, ideally you can customize these. So this is really smart. Take your trackpad gestures and just put them on your screen. This seems obvious and I think it'll work really well. What about an improved keyboard? You've got a little thumb typing keyboard mode you can go into that will now have uh, GIFs, it will have emojis, it will have all sorts of good things like that. They're also 
also showed off voice typing in a far improved form. Uh, you can see it, they're actually on the keyboard now. It even has editing tools, so you can tell it to delete the last sentence and things like that, and apparently that works as well. Personally, I use uh, voice to text a ton on my Android devices because it's just easier. It's, I don't type well on touch screen, so I love seeing this kind of stuff as well. So then they showed off the Microsoft Store having movies in it curated from multiple different streaming sources, and this is kind of a hint at what they were just about to talk about, which is the fact that the Windows Store has been rebuilt from the ground up to allow some pretty crazy stuff. So whether your app is a Win32 app, a UWP app, a PWA app, they don't care anymore. You can put it in the Windows Store. That is incredible because now every app could just be in the Windows Store. But let's go a step crazier because apparently if you want to use your own commerce system, so your own distribution backend, not only can you do that through the Windows Store, they won't even take a cut from you for having the app in their store. So where Google and Apple take a cut from anything in their store that you buy, now you can put your app in the Microsoft Store, use your own commerce back in, and keep all the revenue for yourself. This is such a like wild difference. I'm kind of still in shock that they've agreed to do this. This is insane. Any app can be in the store now, and they don't even want a cut of it if you don't use their commerce service. Absolutely mind-boggling, incredible. Let's keep the incredible going though, because now the Microsoft Store will actually have in it Android apps. You see here, TikTok running on the right on a Windows desktop. This is unbelievable. We talked about Project Latte in the past. This is, this is it, it's coming to fruition. And how are they doing it? Well, they're partnering with Amazon's store. Because as you know, Amazon doesn't use Google's backend, the Play services. So this just makes sense because Microsoft also won't be able to use Play services. So why not just partner with someone who's already done this really, really well? So essentially, if an app is in Amazon's store, it's going to work on, on Windows 11. You're going to be able to pin TikTok down to your taskbar or whatever Android app you want to be able to download. It's going to be in the Microsoft Store, and it's going to run basically like a native app, apparently. This is fantastic. And for someone like me who just talked about how I was really loving the Tab S7 from Samsung because I could have my web browser up, I could have the Android Twitter app there or Pokemon Go there or whatever, that's really cool. Well, now your Surface Pro 7 sitting over my shoulder is gonna be able to do this stuff too. Now, granted, to a lesser extent, because the Play Store has more apps than Amazon's App Store. I'm aware of this. But it's got a lot of apps in it, so this is a huge step into the right direction as far as I'm concerned. This is a best of all worlds kind of scenario. This is, I, I think this is, it's almost going to be impossible to overstate how important this could be if the execution is strong enough. What an open way to do business from Microsoft. This is such a landmark shift. And of course, they did talk a bit about gaming as well. Direct storage should improve loading times in compatible hardware. Auto HDR will be there as well on, on select games. So it'll basically apply HDR uh, through just a software patch. And many, many games already support this. And that should make games generally look better. But that's pretty much the highlights as best I can recall them. Sadly, no, they did not mention Surface Neo. I am heartbroken. Uh, yeah, but that did not happen. But still, there's a lot there to like. I think the Microsoft Store stuff is the biggest thing here, especially if you're not wowed by the visual overhaul, the rounded edges, the glass pane look, which I do quite like. Guys, I'd love to know what you guys think about all this stuff in the comments down below. As always, thank you for making it to the end of this video because it helps me a ton. Please consider supporting Scary If Literal on Flatter in the link in the description. Stay tuned for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.